Hey guys, so today it is time for my makeup basket update. This is my bi-weekly Shop My Stash series where I pick out products from my collection that I want to maybe reconnect with, rediscover. In this first half of the video, I'm going to give you an overview of the products that I had in my basket for the last two weeks, show you some looks that I created with them. I'm also going to show you how this look came together where I used all of the products. Um, and just kind of, yeah, it's almost like I'm re-reviewing these products. They're products that were in my collection, but maybe I forgot about them. Maybe I hadn't used them in a while. So I'm going to kind of share my updated thoughts on them. And then we will go through my collection and pick out a brand new set of products. As you can probably tell with my recent makeup looks, and especially with today's look, I am fully in spring and summer makeup mode. And for me, that means light, breathable coverage, simple looks in the sense of like fewer products, just the fewer products I can put on my face while still getting a really put together look, the better. I'm also really loving colorful eyeshadow looks, but still very simple colorful eyeshadow looks. Like today, this is essentially a one shadow look. I technically used three eyeshadows, but I mean, there's really one main shadow that's the star of the show here. So kind of a light, colorful tint on the lips. That's what I'm really into, and I really had a lot of fun with my basket over the last two weeks. So we're going to get into all of that, but first I do want to thank today's sponsor, which is Skillshare. So if you've never heard of Skillshare before, they are an online learning platform where you can go and take a course on basically anything you're interested in, whether you're trying to improve your skills for your career or you're just trying to pick up a new hobby. You know, I recently had this realization that I kind of miss learning. Like, I haven't been in school for a while, it's been a few years, and just because I'm not in school anymore doesn't mean I have to just completely stop learning new things altogether. And I love that with Skillshare, you can basically take a course in anything you could imagine, whether it's house plants, makeup, starting a YouTube channel, graphic design, any kind of creative avenue you want to explore, or maybe you're wanting to enhance your skill set for your career. I recently finished up a course on Skillshare called YouTube Success script, shoot, and edit with MKBHD. The course is taught by Marquez Brownlee, who is a very successful YouTuber who runs a tech YouTube channel. I've been doing YouTube for a while, but I still feel like there is so much for me to learn when it comes to editing, shooting videos, lighting, all of that. And this is basically a crash course in how to run a YouTube channel. Even though, like I said, I've been doing YouTube for a while, I still feel like I picked up so many amazing tips that I'm so excited to start implementing in my channel, in my editing, my lighting setup, all of that. So I, I know I get a lot of questions from you guys about you know how to start a YouTube channel, I highly recommend this course. So maybe you're thinking about joining Skillshare, you're not quite sure if you're ready to commit, but you're thinking about it. Skillshare is actually offering the first 1,000 of you who either use my link or my code, which is Sarah Rose, a one month free trial of Skillshare. This will give you unlimited access to all of the courses on Skillshare for an entire month. You'll have a whole month to explore, see if it's a good fit for you. So it's really a great offer. If you're interested, I will have that linked at the very top of my description box as well as in a pinned comment. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Let's go ahead and hop into my makeup basket update. So this past basket was really all about light coverage and fun, like bright springy colors. Here in Georgia, it is May. Well, it's May no matter where you live, but with it being May, it's basically summer. Like, we are having our first 90 degree day this week, so, you know, it's over. Spring is over, summer is in full swing, so I am really all about this kind of makeup right now. So for this past rotation, I had two kind of light coverage base products. It's so funny, I, I, I know I'm not the only one here, but I feel like in like the fall and winter, I get really into fuller coverage, and then once it gets hot outside, I just do not have the patience for high coverage makeup. I just want the skin tints, I want the breathable coverage. And luckily my skin has actually been quite cooperative lately, like I haven't been getting a ton of breakouts. I feel like my skincare routine is just really working for me. I'll link the video up here and down below my Tretinoin update where I shared my current skincare routine. I feel like it's just really working well for me and thanks to that, I feel like I'm really able to wear these kind of light coverage products and still be really happy with the way that my skin looks. So. First I had the Unfoundation Matte Tint from Undone Beauty. Um, I really like this product. I never thought that I would like something that's called a matte anything when it comes to like complexion products, but I really like wearing this over like a more glowy sunscreen. So today underneath I'm wearing the Kapari Antioxidant Face Shield with SPF 30 as my sunscreen. And this is very hydrating, a little bit glowy, but not like crazy greasy or anything and it looks great underneath the skin tint. Like, I feel like my skin just looks very healthy and skin-like. Now, when I wear this over a matte sunscreen, I do feel like my face looks very, like, flat and matte, so it's really all about what I'm wearing underneath it, but even though this is probably the lightest coverage 
foundation in my collection, I would say. But even though it has such light coverage, I'm still really happy with the way that my skin looks when I wear this. My favorite way to apply this I found over the past couple of weeks is to actually stipple it in with a brush. I like the flat top kabuki brush from Sigma for foundation. And usually I feel like that does a really good job just giving me like a nice, even, non-streaky application with this. I do like to just tap over that very lightly with a damp beauty sponge just to kind of smooth it out a little bit. But I don't like blending this in with a sponge initially because I do feel like the sponge will just kind of soak all of that coverage up and this doesn't really have a whole lot of coverage to begin with so a brush is definitely the way to go or fingers but I feel like it takes a while to blend in with fingers so that was what I discovered with this this month but I mean this is what I'm wearing on my face right now and I I'm just really happy with the way that my skin looks I feel like because my skin hasn't been breaking out a ton lately I'm just kind of in the mood to let my my natural skin show through I still like to have a base product of some sort on just to kind of give me like a solid base for other products to go on top of but this has been amazing. Like, I feel like I'm gonna be getting a lot of use out of this this summer. So then the concealer that I had in my makeup basket was the CoverGirl Clean Fresh Hydrating Concealer. This is also definitely the lightest coverage concealer I have in my collection. As you can see, my dark circles, they're still happily peeking through. I have very persistent, like, just kind of genetic dark circles, so, um, this is not my go-to concealer for, like, when I'm filming because I do feel like the dark circles are still very much there. But I really do like this for everyday light makeup, like if I'm just running errands that day but I want to do a little bit of makeup, this is great because it doesn't look like I'm wearing concealer. Because it is kind of a thin consistency, it's not as prone to like settling in those fine lines. And I do think that this is a good product to have in my arsenal, even though it's not necessarily like my go-to favorite concealer just because I do like coverage on the under eyes most days. If I'm wearing concealer, it's gonna be a higher coverage one, but I do think this combo is great for you know a hot summer day where I just, I don't have the time to deal with like my makeup melting off. These two are great because they are thinner, lighter coverage. They're, it's just not gonna look as obvious if I sweat them off. So those were both really great to work with. So then you might remember, I also rolled in my Milani blush in Luminoso, and I was saying in my last video, my last makeup basket video that I felt like I hadn't reached for this in a really long time and I was just kind of trying to figure out why that was, like why haven't I been feeling drawn to this? And I thought that I didn't like it as much as I once did, but I <laughs> proved myself very wrong because I fell completely back in love with this blush over these past two weeks. This is what I'm wearing today. I've been saying a lot over the past like maybe six months that I've really been into matte cheek products, blushes, bronzers, but I think I'm back on my glowy blush BS right now because this looks so pretty. Now, granted, I do have a highlighter on too. The highlighter that was in my basket was the Estate Highlighter in Lit. These two together also make a stunning combo. I I'm in love with how my cheeks look right now, but even with this blush on its own, <sighs> I need to calm down because I'm getting like worked up. I'm so excited about this blush, but even though it's very glowy, like this is probably the glowiest blush in my collection, it's not glittery and it's not metallic. And so for those two reasons, I feel like it still works really well as a blush while not emphasizing texture. And it's just the most gorgeous, like peachy color for the summertime, especially. Like I feel like when I'm wearing this blush, I look like I have, you know, I've got that like I just went on vacation to the beach kind of glow. Like I don't look like I necessarily have a tan or a sunburn, but I just look really healthy. Like I just got some good fresh air. I feel like I owe this blush a formal apology for not using it and appreciating it for like all these months, but this is so pretty. Like I think I'm gonna be wearing this a lot this summer, just like, just like I said with those other two products, but it's also just so nice. If I don't wanna mess with bronzer or highlighter, if I'm, like I said, just trying to do like a minimal summer light makeup kind of routine, this blush, I feel like this is the only cheek product that I really need. It gives me some glow, um, so I don't really need to wear a highlight with it. It gives me kind of that sort of bronzed, sort of sun-kissed look, so I can also get away with not wearing bronzer. I mean, I, I skip bronzer all the time anyway, but I just think this is such a beautiful blush, and I am really happy that I rediscovered it. You know, because it would have been really easy to say, oh, I haven't reached for this in a while. That must mean I should just declutter it, but no, I'm so glad I gave it another chance. So this is your PSA. I know this is a very, like, 
old blush. Like, this has been on the market for years. This was popular in, like, the 2015 YouTube era. But if you have this sitting in your collection, dust it off, bring it back out, use it. Um, even if you don't normally like glowy blushes, give it a try because... It's, it's a beautiful blush. So like I said, the highlighter that I had in my basket this month was the Estate Highlighter in the shade Lit. I also fell back in love with this. I mean, I never fell out of love with it necessarily, but I did go kind of a while without using it, and I remembered why I love this so much. It's a beautiful tone, just a great everyday highlighter color. It's got a little bit of like a golden undertone, but the, the base of this is very translucent. So um, I, I just find it really easy to pull off without it ever looking like too yellowy golden or anything. You just get this very, very healthy, I don't know, like dewy glow. Even though it's a powder, it still gives you kind of like a dewy shine. It's very smooth. There's no glitter flecks. It's just pure smooth goodness. So <laughs> loving that as well. All right, let's chat about eyeshadow. This last rotation I rolled in my BH Cosmetics Lost in Los Angeles palette and my Urban Decay Shadow Stick in the shade Fishbowl. So Lost in Los Angeles, such a fun palette, really fun selection of colors, perfect for the spring and summer. You've got some pastels, and then also just a bunch of like mid-toned colorful shades. Today, I actually mentioned in my Makeup Basket video two weeks ago where I picked this palette out, that I really wanted to do a look featuring Dreamer, this green color all over the lid, and that's what I did today. Pretty much just applied that all over the lid, blended it into the crease, I could have just left it at that, but I wanted to play with that Urban Decay Shadow Stick again as well, so I popped that on the inner corner. If you don't have this shadow stick, you could also totally just use the shade LAX here because it's quite similar. Put that in the inner corner, and then I topped that with the shade The Hills here. I used that to basically top that blue color, and then I also used a little bit on my brow bone. Lately, I've been into a shimmery brow bone. I never used to do that, but... I've just been liking just like putting shimmer everywhere. Like I feel like shimmer, I mean even though this is a mostly matte look, I, I don't mind a little bit of shimmer kind of creeping up to the crease and the brow bone lately. And I really like that kind of like dewy glow that that gives. Like when I'm, when I have my head turned down, you can't even tell that it's there. But occasionally if I turn my head up, it catches the light in a really pretty way. So. That was a really fun color to play with. Another look that I did, I had the Hills, that same shade, all over my lid. And then the shade 90210 in the crease. Again, a two shadow look, very simple. I feel like with this palette, at least what I typically end up doing is just like a very simple one or two shadow look. Because, you know, I've mentioned before, I do feel like this color story is a little bit confusing, a little intimidating to me because it's just kind of random. So I, I more so view this as almost like a supplemental palette to my collection or a companion palette where, um, you know, I can pair it with other palettes or I might just be dipping into like one or two shades when I reach into this palette. But that's okay with me because it offers a lot of really unique colors that I don't have elsewhere in my collection. So um, I really enjoyed it. I didn't end up dipping into all the shades, but um, I'm really glad that I was able to use that Dreamer shade one more time, and then that, that kind of lilac look was really fun. So this might make another appearance in my makeup basket like at some point again in the summer because it's just such a perfect spring and summer palette. So I think I will go ahead and roll this out for now, but I will probably roll it back in at some point in the next couple of months because it's just a really fun one. The Urban Decay Shadow Stick in Fishbowl, I did use this a good handful of times. I think my favorite way to use this is the inner corner for like a little pop of blue. Um, there was one time that I actually tried to wear this all over my lid, kind of the same thing I did today with the green, but I tried to just have this blue all over the lid as a one shadow matte look, and I really didn't like the way that it looked. I felt like it went on patchy, and it was just kind of like skippy and almost dry looking, and I'm not sure why that was. I do feel like part of it is the formula of this. I feel like it's a little bit dry and patchy at times. I haven't had the courage to try that again since then. I ended up like washing my makeup off and redoing it that day, which I rarely do, but I just really hated the way it looked. But I do really like this as an inner corner pop, but I don't think this is like a product that you need to buy, that you need to have in your collection. I'm not much of a stick eyeshadow person myself anyway. Um, this is just something I happened to get in PR a while ago, so I'm, you know, trying to get use out of it. But 
Um, I do really like the color. I think it's a fun color and I love the way it goes with that green today. So those are my thoughts on that. This is gonna stay in for another round because I literally only used this once and it was today for the demo. This is the Makeup Revolution Super Fix Super Hold Misting Spray. The goal of putting this in my makeup basket was just to kind of see if I could figure this product out because I felt like I hadn't really given it enough chances yet and I still don't feel like I figured it out. So I'm gonna leave it in for another rotation. I don't I can't figure out if this is a product that I should keep for like certain purposes. Like I need to figure out if it actually helps as far as extending the wear of my makeup. I need to do like a proper test of like this on one side and nothing on the other side. Um, Cause if it does actually make a difference and I feel like there'd be a reason for me to keep it. But if not, I, I think this will probably get decluttered. So long story short, I'm gonna keep this in the basket for another two weeks and see if I can figure out how I feel about it after that. So finally I had this coral lipstick. This is the Madame Glam lipstick in the shade Pucker Up. It is a really like hot pink coral shade. Fun color for the summertime. I think I found the only way I really like wearing this is sheared out, which is how I'm wearing it right now. I initially applied it like fully opaque and you'll see in the demo, I feel like it's just a little bit too hot pink coral for me. And I prefer corals that have more of like a reddish orange to them than like, a super pink one like this. So anyway, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep this in my collection long term or not. I feel like it's it's a pretty fun shade. It's just a little bit tricky for me. So I'm not sure about that. I think soon I want to do like a really in-depth lip declutter where I actually try on all of my lipsticks and decide which ones to keep after trying them on on camera. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to do that, but I'm I'm thinking about it. Let me know if you'd be interested in seeing that because I would like to kind of compare it to some of my other shades and really decide if it's like worth keeping, you know? So that's our little recap on my previous basket. The really standout products, I think, were the Unfoundation Matte Tint, the um, both of the Baked Cheek products, the Milani Luminoso and the Estee Highlighter, and the Lost in Los Angeles palette was really fun, of course. So now that we've gone over all those products, I am ready to put those back into my collection, and then we can pick out a new set of products for this basket. All right, so first things first, I do wanna pick out a palette. I think I'm actually gonna pick another drugstore palette. I think the one I wanna pull out is my Flower Beauty Jungle Lights. This palette absolutely makes me think of spring and summer, especially that cor coral shade up in the top right. I love putting that all over my lid uh, with like a blue liner. That's always so pretty. The green also, I love wearing greens this time of year. So yeah, that's gonna be my palette pick. Um, of course, I also have my pan those eyeshadows going on, so I don't like to have too many different eyeshadows that I'm trying to use at the same time. So I think this will be a good like little curated palette. So many of these shades make a great one and done shadow, which is great for these kind of minimal looks that I've been into. So that's gonna be our eyeshadow pick. Next up we have my lip drawer. One thing I've been really excited to pull out into my makeup basket is my e.l.f. Glossy Lip Stain in the shade Coral Cutie. So I don't feel like this makes a great lip stain in the sense that it doesn't actually stain and last on my lips. I'm not sure if it's just this color or if it's all of them because this is the only color I've tried. But that's what it looks like swatch. Very orange, as you can see, kind of like a sheer orangey coral. But I love this for this time of year because it's very comfortable, very thin and lightweight. It doesn't like bleed outside of your lip line or anything. And it also has a very kind of like cold sensation on your lips, which is just very refreshing in the hot weather. So I'm gonna pull that in, that'll be fun. So I feel like it's been a while since I've put any like cream products in my makeup basket. I really wanna pull in my LYS blush in the shade kindness this is a beautiful like peachy coral color as you can tell i'm in a very peachy coral mood which i mean what else is new i love those colors but this is like the time of year where those colors can really shine so this is one of my favorite cream blushes in my collection so definitely want to give that some love this rotation and i'm also going to pull in my soul body bronzing balm something about this product makes me think of the summer i think because i was using it a lot last summer it also has kind of like a tropical scent to it and this is the tone of bronzer that I feel like works best in the summertime. I love the formula of this. It is so easy, so blendable. So that'll be really fun to play with. As far as highlighter, I think I'm actually gonna pull in, this is a relatively new one to my collection, the Essence Pure Nude Highlighter. I'm still trying to figure out if this tone works for me or if it's too dark. Um, so I kind of just want this to be like my final, like let's test this out, let's figure this out. Um, by the end of this two weeks, if I've determined that it's too dark for me, I think I'll go ahead and let go of it. 
um, but I just want to see if I can make this work. Let's also grab my Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder in Diffused Light. Um, this is kind of a translucent like finishing powder. I feel like I haven't used it in a while and I, I don't want to just like let this go to waste. So yeah, let's bring that one in as well. For foundation, I'm going to roll in my Ilia Skin Tint. This is one of my other favorite skin tints. This is like a glowy, this is a very glowy one, whereas that Undone one is very matte. But this is so nice for these hot months. I love that it has SPF 40 in it. It's so comfortable, um, just hydrating, breathable. It it just looks very pretty. Like it kind of forms its own like layer of skin on top of your skin and it just looks very natural. I know that sounds weird, but that's the best way I can think to describe it. So I'm gonna roll that one in. I just, yeah, I'm just really in the mood for this product right now. All right, the basket's getting kind of full. I'm not gonna roll in a concealer this time. I don't always have to have like something in every category. Um, and I just, I feel like I'm just happy to dabble between all of those. So let's leave that there. The final thing I want to roll in is an eyeliner. I want to roll in my Revolution eyeliner in the shade Sky Blue. This is a beautiful like mid-tone cobalt blue. I love wearing this specific kind of color with that coral shade in the Flower Jungle Lights palette. I actually did a look like that last year and um, I still think about that look to this day and I want to recreate it. So. That is going to be my eyeliner in my basket this time around. And that is, that's a full basket in my book. That is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's actually nine products. Normally I like to only have eight. So this will be plenty, plenty to play with. Really excited to, especially for those cream cheek products, the flower palette. Yeah, I'm really feeling inspired to have fun with makeup these days. So look forward to seeing these products on my face in Instagram reels. Throughout, throughout the next two weeks. Again, a big thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. If you wanna check out that free one month trial, I will have that all linked down for you below. But otherwise, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you've not already. I'll also leave my makeup basket playlist linked down below if you want to watch more videos like this. I've done a ton of them on my channel. And otherwise, I hope you all have an amazing rest of your day and I will talk to you again very soon in my next video. Bye.